Right, good morning, grade 12s, and welcome to our uh, first theory module for this year. So this is module 1.1, Computers in Our Everyday Lives. And we're going to be looking at why we use computers and the type of computer system. So a lot of this is going to be um, revision. But remember now, for grade 12, we are actually combining um, grade 10, 11, and some new work in grade 12. So always be revising on those things. We're also going to look at the different categories of users and this lovely term that comes up every now and then, convergence. Okay, so why do we use computers? We've gone through this in grade 10, 11 all, already. Um, we use computers because of three things, efficiency, accuracy, and reliability. So we know that with efficiency, it helps us save time, labor, resources. It's more accurate. It's more reliable. Um, it assists with communication as well because it enables us to eliminate time and distance issues, you know, in terms of businesses. It allows us to communicate and share information in many different ways globally, save on communication costs, and interact socially on a worldwide scale. And we can see through the various social media platforms how communication has been impacted by this. Now, we also know that we have different types of computer systems. And again, we have spoken about this, but now we need to look at it in a slightly different manner. When we are comparing devices, so if I'm looking at my smartphone, if I'm looking at a hybrid device, if I'm looking at a desktop, there are things I need to look at and questions I need to ask. For example, how powerful is this device? What is the device going to be used for? What is the size? What is the software that I need to use? So, for example, if you are going to be buying a laptop, then you need to ask yourself, okay, well, number one, what is it going to be used for? Am I using it to connect to a network? Am I using it for gaming? Am I using it for video editing? Am I using it for basic office applications? Now, the minute you answer that question, it's going to help you decide on the size. It's going to help you decide on the hardware specs. And it's going to help you decide on the software that you need. Because if you're using it for gaming, you need a lot of RAM. You need a strong CPU and a fast CPU. Um, you would want a fairly large screen. And there's specific software that you would want on there as well. So um, these are questions we need to ask. And this relates to laptops, desktops, smartphones, all of those things. We have our non-portable computers. Now, remember when we spoke about portability, we spoke about the fact that it uses a battery. So our non-portable computers, like our desktops, they are not meant to be moved around. They are large. They are generally more powerful than the portable computers. And uh, some of them are even all-in-one units. But they plug into the wall and they get their power from that. Okay? Your laptops, um, tablets, etc., they do take up less space than this, but they are more difficult to fix and upgrade. Now, two examples are your desktop computer and your server. And then you get something called an entry-level computer. Now, this is a term that comes up very often. And what it's basically saying is that within that particular category of computer, it's the cheapest to purchase in that range. It's got lower hardware specifications, so um, a slightly slower CPU, maybe some less RAM. So instead of having 8 gigs of RAM, it might only have 4 gigs of RAM. And even the software that it has in terms of its operating system, um, they usually have home editions. Okay, so this is an entry-level computer right please know that for your tests and exams um, our portable computers this again we know we know it's got an all-in-one design everything is incorporated in that case it's designed to fold to be easy to carry to protect the various parts so that's not an issue um, we've looked at in the grade 11 modules the different types of portable computers as well but this is something that is very important now with your computers, um, they are built with a modular, what we call a modular design. So you need to understand this term. This means that the computer you buy can be put together in pieces 
with your requirements in mind instead of consisting of a single unit in which all the hardware is fixed. Okay? Smaller technologies like your laptops and smartphones are less modular. The parts are not easily replaceable. So if we look at the motherboard of a desktop computer, here we've got our ports that are built into the motherboard. This is where our CPU goes. This is where our memory goes, um, our expansion slots, etc. So what they're saying with a modular design is that if I don't want that particular CPU, if I want a faster CPU and it matches with a motherboard, I can take this one out, buy another one, pop another one in. If something goes wrong with the memory, I can pop out the memory, buy memory, or new memory, and then put it into these slots. If I want to change my graphics card, I can do that as well. Now, our laptops and our smartphones don't always allow, in fact, your smartphone, I mean, number one, doesn't allow you to do that. Um, your laptops give you limited options, so like the hard drive and the RAM can be done, um, and RAM is usually the one thing that people change a lot on the um, laptops, but you also have to cater for the motherboard and find out how much RAM that motherboard can actually handle. So uh, that's what is meant by a modular design. Then we have head-mounted displays, and this is where our virtual reality and augmented reality comes in. Now, please remember the big differences. Our virtual reality, we put in on whatever headset it is, and it gives us a completely digital environment, right? We are in a whole different environment with virtual reality. Augmented reality, we still see the real world with digital information overlay. So when I've got these specs on, I know um, Apple came out with something regarding this, you can still see the real world, but you've got digital content that is displayed over that as well. So our head-mounted display that is worn on the head or embedded in a helmet with a small display for one or both eyes. This can be used in gaming and aviation. Um, and our augmented reality creates an effect of digital content interacting with the world as, as I mentioned. And then we've got our virtual reality as well. So please, if you see this term, head-mounted display, HMD, please understand what they are talking about. We also have our drones. Now, they might not always use the term drones. In some cases now, they are going to use them. They might use the term unmanned aerial vehicles, but that's an older term. But just I want you to understand both so you don't get confused. These are aircraft devices that fly above the ground and are not piloted. Okay. Um, there's a number of things that they can do. Some of them have cameras. Some of them can, you know, pick up... Um, items as well. I know Amazon had an ad where they were delivering um, parcels with drones. So interesting. Right. Then we have something that is very important to the grade 12 cat theory syllabus, which is your categories of users. Now we have about four different types of users. The first of which is a personal user. This is someone who does limited office tasks. A little bit of internet banking, email and browsing, social networking, maybe some Skype with friends, viewing and sharing photos, and, you know, using the device really for entertainment as well. That's just a personal use. A lot of people fall into this category. Then you have your Soho or your small office home office user. Now, this depends on the type of business the user runs. But generally for a small office home office user... You have entry-level, see there's that term again, entry-level computers for admin functions like accounting, databases of clients, electronic document archiving, um, and planning and scheduling, right? So that's really what a Soho user does. And again, I'm going to emphasize on the fact that they generally use entry-level computers. Then we have our power users, and these are the guys who are going to use the top of the range hardware and software. So you're going to talk about hardcore gamers, video editing professionals, engineers, scientists, architects, all these types of people, um, because they require hardware that's more processor intensive. In fact, they are using software that requires more processor in, uh, intensive hardware. Um, so yeah, just understand the difference between those. That's what's now our personal user, Soho user, and our power user. And then we have the mobile user. They want and need to have their technology with them wherever they are. 
They use a smartphone or tablet for any of the following. Browsing the internet, playing games, reading books, navigating with GPS, taking quick notes, uh, maybe taking photos, video, recording sound as well. So a lot of people fall into the personal user. There are those who fall into the mobile user as well. There are a few that fall into the power user and then you've got your Soho user um, for those doing business from home or business on the go as well. So that's important because that usually comes up in the form of a scenario where they'll ask you what type of user is the scenario referring to, etc. Then we have our last slide dealing with the term of convergence. You must know this term and be able to explain it. This is something that does come up as well. This is the trend where separate technologies, so separate technologies and functions that previously required what? Different devices, as you can see, they are now combined into a single device. The smartphone and tablet are good examples of convergence. And folks, that's it for module 1.1.